Well, next tonight, farming, like most other industries across our region, as we've been talking about, and many households as well, is dealing with the impact of rising costs. Fertiliser prices have tripled in 12 months, according to the National Farmers Union, and the sector's heavy reliance on diesel-powered machinery means fuel bills are soaring. Well, an event has been taking place in Dumfries to look at how new, greener technology could possibly help to cut costs. Our reporter, James Mahan, spent the day there for us. Today went really well by all accounts. We met people from all across the UK, from Wales, from as far south as London, people who travel across from Ireland and Northern Ireland for today's event. And an estimated 5,000 people have been here over, over the course of the last seven or eight hours. Some of the big themes from today's event have been looking at innovation and transformation, as well as not having a reliance on fossil fuels. That's been a really big theme from today's event. Farming in the UK now contributes more than £120 billion each year to the UK economy. But the last three years have had their challenges. Most important, I think, is actually the social aspect for everyone to get out and meet like-minded people. We've had two years of lockdown and we're also coming out with Brexit. We've all other challenges facing us. So here to come and learn the, the new technologies that's happening in grass harvesting and the growing of this grass crop. For many farmers, today is an opportunity to learn how to cut costs and find alternatives with inflation and expenses for their sector at record highs. Purchased nutrients which we buy in chemical fertilizer, that has trebled in price in the last six months. Huge input challenges to the farmer. And then again, we need that returns coming back in the production of food. Having travelled from Southampton, one exhibitor is finding Scottish farmers are open to turning away from expensive diesel machinery and seeing the potential for electricity vehicles. Uh, certainly price is a consideration, and like any new technology at the moment, we would be the first to admit it's not cheap. But actually from a longevity, sustainability point of view, a lot of people are considering it. You know, if you look at a lot of farms now, whether it be solar panels, whether it be wind turbines or renewables in the form of anaerobic digesters creating electricity, a lot of farmers have got on farm their own electric generating source. So as a result, the idea of an electric machine is starting to appeal to them, you know, from a reduced cost point of view at least, from when it comes to fuel. Many attendees were keen to observe state-of-the-art tractors at work and also to support younger farmers into the sector. Agriculture is such a key industry at the minute. It's, it's, everybody should get involved, get to be out and about in shows and events like this, a bit of office work as well. But, yeah, it's just, it's just a great industry to be part of. The first methane-powered tractor was also on display, as well as grass-cutting machinery. And the event in three years' time hopes to focus on energy efficiency. So one of the co-organisers and hosts of today's event has been the Agriculture Engineers Association. And we're joined by Kayleigh from that organisation. Kayleigh, what's today been like for you? Oh, it's been absolutely fantastic. Bringing all the players together after COVID, especially this, so this event's held here every three years. Um, with, we, the Agricultural Engineers Association, the event organisers. It's good to see all the innovation, all the people out, and, and the sun's been shining. Obviously, the rain the last couple of days, it's brought people together. And yeah, it's just good to see all the equipment and all the technology advances over since the last event. What have some of the highlights been for yourself? Well, there's um, been a hydrogen tractor here, electric telehandler. It's showing how the industry is moving forward. And on another stand, they were showing machinery from the 1950s, comparing it to how it's advanced today. And just well, there's been a lot of younger, younger phases. We've had the local primary school come round to see. And it's just been really good to get it all, all there. I can imagine putting this together wasn't easy. What's it been like over the last few weeks and months getting it all together? Oh, it's, it's a lot of work. Well, we, um, we've been here since Thursday setting up. The weather looked fantastic for the whole of this week. And then Monday, the heavens opened. It's rained a lot, but we've worked really well with the farm manager, Hugh, who you interviewed earlier, and my event team, and even all the exhibitors, just to, to pull it all together. And it's just it's been wonderful. And it all worked out. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> what advice would you have for people out there who are watching, who are interested in getting into this kind of sector, into the industry? Oh, we'll definitely start young. At the Agricultural Engineers Institute, that is a big thing of what we're doing, training in, tech, training in technology. Um, a lot of the manufacturers have um, apprenticeships, not just for technicians, and um, it's the engineers, design engineers, salespeople. You can cover the whole, whole um, sector. It's not, you've not just... You've not just got to get your hands dirty. You can be at that dirty. And you can just move the industry forward. Perfect. And that's what people have to keep doing. Kaylee, thank you yes. so much. <laughs>
<laughs> there you have it, folks. A very busy day, a very fun-filled day, and the sun is still shining here in the sunny south of Scotland.